right, all right. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? Feeling good. Yeah, another week and uh, got through this draft. Uh, try to get some sleep after that. Uh, reported on a lot of uh, draft picks. Finally, seven draft picks after a couple of four pick drafts the last couple of years. So I actually got to cover a first round pick this year and then a bunch of undrafted free agents, which that, those were a little bit less than the last couple of years. But uh, but still, uh, yeah, now feeling refreshed again. Um, grades are silly overall because, of course, you've really got to wait a couple of years. But they want us well, to not always do that. <laughs> right. What what's your thoughts on the draft overall? Yeah, first uh, I'll start with the first round pick. Um at, at first I, I didn't love it, but then I came around to really liking Chop Robinson the more I, I looked into him and uh his pass rush win rate, his effects on the quarterback. Uh Patrick Paul then in the second round. I mean, I I was here on this show on Friday and I actually uh, he was my offensive pick as as a prediction. Uh, I, you asked for one name and one name only, and the first one I gave you was Braden Fitz. We don't fence straddling yeah. here, bro. We don't fence straddle on this show. We don't allow people to fence straddle. Yeah. On this show. <laughs> so, so then I, I I gave you an offensive pick as a bonus, and then I ended up nailing it with the tackle out of Houston, who will be a developmental piece. But uh, right now, you have your starting tackles. You know, you probably will have. Games where Teron Armstead will miss, but you already have that reserve veteran tackle. But then after that, if this is Teron Armstead's last year, if this is Kendall Lamb's last year, then Butch Berry can really take this guy and then give him that second season in the system, which is always key for these young offensive linemen. So I I think they already saw a lot of improvement from him. Uh, his Going into his senior year, uh, how he just finished up his college career at Houston, and then and he's a great kid that I think will be very coachable, very energetic, very enthusiastic, and really wants to be a Dolphin. So I think he's going to uh, to really give it his all to make sure he continues to, to develop. And then I think they got a lot of good value picks on day three. Um, so uh, you you end up trading into that fourth round, Jalen Wright. They get another speedy running back. So it was interesting that you go ahead and do uh, the same, grab another one when you already are kind of loaded at that position. But now, if Raheem Mostert is hampered by injury, if Devon H. Chan misses time, if one of those is out, then you still have two whenever. So you don't have to change up your offense too much. So from that standpoint, I do like it, even though if on the surface you might say, uh, they already have that. They can do something else. They can grab an interior offensive line. But you're also into day three of the draft. By the way, that was my explanation to your partner, Chris Perkins. <laughs> right. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, because he was complaining about it. And I, and I explained to him that that's kind of – there's no more bell cows, dude. Right, you know, right. It, it, it's over. And it was more about when you get to Chris Brooks and Jeff Wilson, he has to change the offense. So last year, both those guys were banged up. Now if you have Jalen Wright, now the offense never changes because now you have three guys with the exact same skill set. So I thought – he's hard-headed, bro. This is <laughs> I'm talking about McDaniel. Oh, okay. If, I thought you were talking about Perk, which uh, – which, uh, yeah. I'm talking about his style. <laughs> right. <laughs> Power backs because Perk and the rest of us are – you know, we're tuned in a different way. We want a big receiver. This guy doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care about big receivers. Yeah, the guys drafted, the guys undrafted, they were all small too. Right. It's amazing. He he does not give a shit what we think. And just because we think traditionally, hey, go get him a big receiver. In his eyes, the big receiver is John U. Smith because right. he's the one that can run actually. So he got a fast tight end and that's his big target. Outside of that, all the other receivers are all small. Even all the slot receivers he got yesterday in the last two days in street free agency, he does things his way, dude. And so when they did the Jalen Wright thing, this is about him having his offense for four quarters. That's it. That's all it is. Right, right. The, the, that's clearly the running back that, that he likes. And um, I, I kind of figured the Dolphins would get into either the third or fourth round. So I wasn't sure how it would be. I know a lot of times I was on this program and telling you, oh, I like the trade down scenario in the first round. So you add a third rounder that way, and then you still um, find some good value later in the first round. Uh, but they ended up doing it with the flexibility they have from the comp picks in 2025 
from losing Tristan Wilson, from losing Rob Hunt in this year's free agency. You have some extra third rounders. You send one uh, to uh, uh, it was Philadelphia, right? Uh, well, they send theirs. They send theirs because they can't trade right. the compensatory. Right, right. Yeah, you, yeah. You can't can't trade your own. Chris Greer explained to us later, which uh, which I found interesting because I thought that uh, what the Dolphins had from the 49ers uh, when they had the Channing Tindall uh, draft pick, that one was a, a comp pick. So I still have to look back into all that, but into how the 49ers uh, uh, ended up with uh, sending theirs to the Dolphins when that trade happened previously. But uh, anyway, oh, comp pick. Well, yeah, because remember, Channing Tindall was 102. End it, of the it can be done after when you're in the when you're in the trade when you're already drafting. That's when it can, but you cannot trade your compensatory pick now at this point. You have to wait till you're in the draft and then you can make those trades. Then so this, the same pick can still be switched all over later. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, late, late once okay. the draft, when the draft rolls around at that time, when the new calendar year rolls around next year. That's when I think you can trade them, but before you can't. You can't trade yeah, your yeah. compensatory picks because they're not officially awarded yet because they're not slotted right, yet. Right, right. So next year, once the season's done and they're slotted, then I think that's how it goes. Don't don't you know gun to head or none, but yeah, yeah, there's a point where they become free for you to trade, and I believe it's around draft time. Yeah, so, no, yeah. I myself was still uh, going to going to go back and look into all those uh, rules to to make sure uh, yeah. for future reporting. But uh, yeah, so right, and and, it, and it, it would make sense because you don't have it yet. Yeah, th those get announced later, so um, they have to just have to go through the whole free agency, make sure they don't add another pick that or add another free agent that ends up canceling out one of the right. ones that that they are slotted to get. But the point is, they did know they had that flexibility because they know they have two coming. From uh, from losing those two guys, right, right, yeah. So, um, but overall, what'd you think? Because to me, I like the draft a lot. It's hard to give it a grade, you know. I'll, I'll screw around with it, have some fun, and say a minus. But it made a lot of sense to me. The draft, you got a couple of pass rushers and Robinson and Kamara. You got a future offensive lineman because uh, obviously Teron and, and Lamb are done next year. So now you've got Keon and Patrick opposite of of jackson so you're planning ahead of time jalen wright again this is your offense this is what you want to run okay i get it now you want to run the same kind of backs okay you, the other two are banged up now you got an extra one so now you got three guys and everybody loved this kid jalen wright dude like holy shit the reviews on him everybody every one of my guys loves jalen wright like through the roof uh, then, uh, then the Malik Washington kid, um, fits that, that, you know, they, they clearly have a hard on to fix the, the, uh, slot because they went and got, uh, Malik Washington. Uh, they got the Taj Washington kid. Then they got Matthew Sexton and Jaquan Burton, uh, the Eastern Michigan and, and FAU kid. Uh, right. so they're, and along with Barrios. Like they're going to solve that third wide receiver problem somehow or another because they overloaded at that position, not just in the draft, but then in, in street free agency. And then you've got Barrios on top of that. And then uh, and then they love their they love their West Coast safeties. So they went and got Patrick Mahomes. I don't know what it is, but they, get, they, they go out. <laughs> You need a safety out west, young man. You know, it's <laughs> kind of what it what happens, you know, in the dolphin draft room. I don't know what it is, but they uh Vernon the uh, whatever the third is uh is oh, a yeah, Bro, Bro yeah, McKinley. Uh, yeah, and then and obviously Hall uh, uh Holland is uh um what's it called? Yeah, uh, Oregon, Oregon and, and also Oregon. Vancouver. He's from uh from Vancouver, right? And then uh and then Oregon and also Jordan Poyer <laughs> went to Oregon State, even though he spent the last decade you know in the nfl and several years in buffalo so that is very yeah. interesting yeah it's it's like i don't know what the hell this is with the west coast safety thing but you know they they they, they they're west coast not east i don't know what maybe it must be those regional scouts over there right right one of those guys must be a former safety or something yeah <laughs> I don't know what it is but <laughs> greer allen and mckenzie 
either they're scouting the West or they've got a regional scout that just, you know, I got us a safety, you know, that kind of shit. But, but to me, it made a lot of sense. And even when you go into the, into the street free agents, they went and added more offensive linemen. They went and added more defensive ends and linebackers. They really attacked. They got a safety in Jordan Colbert. They got another corner in Storm Duck, who obviously has got a great name. So what I like about what they did was they really attacked their deficiencies. And, and they planned ahead with Patrick. So to me, that's why I like what they did. It kind of made a lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I were to give it a grade, uh, I might go B, uh, just a, a solid B. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you start off with an edge rusher. So now you are covered uh, if uh, if Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb aren't up to snuff to start the season. So uh, you could throw out a starting combination of uh, him and Shaq Barrett, of Chop Robinson and, and Shaq Barrett if you need to. But – then if you – once you do have Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb available, then what a rotation that is. And look at the packages. We talked about this on Friday that you can get three and maybe even the four guys on in a package, in a pass rushing package on third down. That will be vital uh, on, on third down. It will be absolutely vicious against uh, opposing quarterbacks. So uh, love to see that. We all had – edge rusher as a position to, to target for the Dolphins. Even if you have one of the better starting tandems, uh, you can never have enough. And uh, I think Mike McDaniel and Chris Greer really understand that after the way last season ended and uh, how they were signing any veteran that they could uh, off the street to, to play in Kansas City and play in a, in a playoff game. Uh, so then you got your tackle of the future, so you got that covered. A running back that you like. Uh, and then uh, those two slot guys, uh, uh, too, uh, th- that'll be good competition. Uh, Malik Washington, Washington, boys. Really like, Washington hmm? boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The two slot Washingtons. I mean, uh, they really found a lot of similarities in them, similar heights. We, we love our Jalens. We love our Washingtons. Oh, yeah. and we love our West Coast safeties. That's how do they not have – That's do, how we roll. Well, we should look into the 2025 draft and make sure there's no safety out of – uh, Seattle named Jalen Washington because right. that would be the ultimate, just everything, all worlds colliding coming together. <laughs> but all we, uh, all we know as Dolphin fans from now on, <laughs> right, Dolphin media, is we must scout all West Coast safeties for me <laughs> and just have a list of West Coast safeties coming out of the draft because guaranteed one of them is going to end up on the Alco and Orange roster. I don't know. <laughs> just yeah, just one of those things. But yeah, and I was looking into Malik Washington. I mean, his short area quickness is phenomenal. So I mean, he, that's great for a slot receiver, and that's why he uh, was able to get 110 receptions and lead college football uh, at Virginia. So um, that you, you solve bring that. that, they will solve that slot problem this year. Yeah. Because, bro, they attacked it. They yeah. attacked it with two draft picks, two undrafted. And bringing Barrios back, Barrios must be like, shit, dude. <laughs> they drafted one. They drafted another. They signed one. They signed another. Like, he he must be like, holy crap, dude. I got a lot of competition. Yeah. And I'm with. I like Malik. I like what I see from him as an athlete. But let me tell you something. And I know people are gonna freak out on this, and they'll freak out if it does happen early on. Don't be surprised if Mohammed Kamara is the guy that is impressing earlier than Chop. Yeah. yeah. I, say, I say that why Chop is still not um, completely a fin- – he's not even close to a finished product. He's super raw. Well, Kamara, because he's undersized, he was forced to actually learn a lot faster in order to be effective. So – you watch him with some of his power moves and his spin moves and, and the way he uses his technique, he might be a little bit more polished actually than chop at this point in time, because when you're shorter or you have some kind of deficiency, you have to work that much harder than all the other athletes in order to overcome. So don't be surprised if this Kamara kid is incredibly intriguing, dude, because I don't give a shit what level you're at. 30 and a half sacks, 45 tackles for losses. You that's that's not a joke, dude. 
That's not a joke at any level. And it's not even Division Two. This guy played at a hockey right. school. Um, that those are some stats. So either you have a knack for the football, or I don't know, he had the luckiest career of his life. But <laughs> I'm gonna go with the, I'm gonna go with you got a knack for the football. Yeah. You don't get those numbers uh, just by accident. Uh, you don't get 13 sacks last season by accident. And same school, you talk about competition, the, the same school that Shaq Barrett uh, came out of. So now you get a couple of Colorado State Rams uh, on uh, as edge rushers for the for the Dolphins. Yeah, he was the other guy I, I wanted to talk about. Five sacks in a, in a college career. Yeah. It's a great career, dude. Yeah. It's a great career. That means you were a very effective pass rusher. And yeah. I don't know. If he had three and a half sacks, how many pressures and hits and hurries did that guy have? Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, a phenomenal burst of motor uh, off the edge, uh, his quickness. I mean, because because he also ran uh, his 40 in, in, in a great time. So, um, yeah, incredible athleticism and also – he dipped a little bit more than uh, than he was expecting. He was, I, I think, some were saying round three. He could have been a day two pick. So, uh, and I think he definitely viewed himself as that as well. Uh, from talking to him uh, on the Zoom after he was selected by the Dolphins in the fifth round, so he came at it. He, he had a quote where he was like. Um, what was it? He, he was saying, uh, yeah, all, all 31 other teams, uh, watch out uh, because uh, I, I'm I, I'm very – he said, I'm very excited, but I'm very, very angry that I went uh, when I did. So now he's coming in with the chip on his shoulder, uh, and, and that's part of this uh, BPA, best player available approach, once you get to this point. So maybe other teams, they were drafting by what position they wanted to target in a certain round and eliminating whoever was the best player – at that point in time, maybe that's how uh, Jalen Wright was there in the fourth round, how uh, Muhammad Kamara was there in, in that fifth round, and uh, even a prospect like Malik Washington last into the sixth round after he led all of college football in receptions. And then you go ahead and, and, and draft those guys when maybe other teams, they look at their positions of need and restrict themselves and then bypass these players, and that's how they dip. And then you end up getting the most uh, talented players that remain out there, even though – if you're the Dolphins, oh, we use a first-round pick on an edge rusher. Well, if if Mo Kamara is the best player once we, we come around in the fifth round, then go ahead and bring him in because uh, even if we, we did already address that position earlier in this draft. Jalen Wright's there, a guy that we love. Even though we do have uh, Raheem Mostert and Devon HN right now, bring him in because we know uh, the offense suffers a little bit if one of our guys goes down and we need uh, another guy that fits this offense. So uh, drafting the guys that they targeted, that they like, their best player available at different posi- points in the draft, and guys that fit what they want to do. Uh, don't forget Jeff Welt and Daniel Rayom. You can call them 954 966 4646. The consultation is completely free. And remember, we got hurricane season right around the corner. We're about to hit May. It starts in June, goes all the way to November. You're going. I hope we never get hit by a storm. But if it does happen, you're before you call the insurance companies, you need to call Welton Rayon. They have their own adjusters. 954-966-4646. If you had a car accident, bankruptcy, personal injury, call them. 954-966-4646. All right. So I don't think this changes anything with Odell. Even though they added all these guys, I still think that they would add Odell if he wants to sign here at their at their price. What do you think now with that? Yeah, I mean the draft doesn't change anything uh, from that standpoint. Maybe it would have if they went and grabbed like if Brian Thomas uh, was was the pick at twenty one or Outside. something. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, and specifically, right. If you target out, you know, a, a receiver that would play more so on the outside as as opposed to slot. So, Odell's, no. not, a, Odell's not a slot guy. You don't want to put him in the slot. He's yeah. a soft player. You know, you you need a tough guy in the middle. Yeah, that's why they got the Malik Washington because he looks like he's got some toughness, like oh, Barry yeah. and and all that. Or you could play Waddle inside because he's a tough son of a bitch. And you saw it the first year when they had no choice but to play him in in the slot so they could get rid of the ball quickly. So I, I'm, so you're with me on this. Since Odell's more of an outside guy, I yes. think he's still in play. I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. And, and and even if you did draft an outside guy in the sixth and seventh round like they did the slot guys, then I, I wouldn't eliminate uh, uh, yeah. pursuits yeah. either way. So, um, yeah. Second, yeah was- that would have been different. 
Right. That would be different if you're drafting a an outside wide receiver earlier in the draft, and then okay, now you got your guy there, and you got him at a lot cheaper of a rate than what Odell would cost you. But um, even then, uh, Odell will have to meet the Dolphins' price too if he wants to be here. Uh, the Dolphins aren't going to overpay. They're not going to do what the what the Baltimore Ravens did last year to get him for a year at fifteen million, something like that. It's uh, you know, Chris Greer is, is going to be more prudent with his spending. So uh, don't expect something like, like that to, to go down, but uh, would be a very nice addition. And also once that June one money hits, then the Dolphins will be very uh, flush with cash to be able to make uh, uh, whatever move necessary. Yeah. Yeah. The two of deal will come then. All right. What do you got going on the Sun Sentinel so folks can check you out? Yeah. Just uh, wrapping up all this draft coverage. Uh, so uh, got everything on all these draft picks on all on all the undrafted, the 12 undrafted uh, free agents that uh, have been confirmed. And um, I think that that would be it for now. Uh, so because the, the roster is about 87 players right now. So leaving three available for uh, maybe Odell, maybe, you know, some other rotational pieces. Um, and then uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, today we have uh, interviews with uh, Zach Sealer and Austin Jackson. So I'll be uh, writing up on what, what they have to say. Uh, Zach Sealer will be interesting. Uh, defensive tackle rotation now without Christian Wilkins. And Austin Jackson, of course, always good to check uh, in on him as well. All right. Good stuff. Follow him on Twitter at David Faronis underscore. And reach out to our guys at Welton Realm, 954-966-4646. As always, my brother, thank you. We will catch up on Friday. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Thank you. You got it. That's our Miami Dolphins report, our Welt and Realm Miami Dolphins report with the one and only David Ferronis. We take a break. 